But let's go back to the Zimmerman case. Because Zimmerman is alive and Trayvon Martin is dead. If I were the prosecutor, I would say, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, here is the essence of this case. One man is dead and one man is alive. One man had a gun and one man didn't have a gun. Now, had Trayvon Martin, who was dead, had a gun, we wouldn't be here today, ladies and gentlemen. Zimmerman would not even be on trial. It would have been two men with a gun in a struggle. One got shot. I believe, personally, that Zimmerman was a loser type, a kind of mall cop who couldn't make it as a cop, and he was out looking for trouble. He was hunting. He was hoping there'd be someone he could shoot. The 9-11 operator told Zimmerman to not pursue the other man, but he ignored this 9-11 command and wanted to play hero. And so, ladies and gentlemen of the Savage Jury, if Trayvon was white, would this case be any different? No, I don't think so. He'd be dead anyway. Race got injected into it by that vile street rat, Al Sharpton, who, as you remember, during the early days of his career, before he was discovered by General Electric, was outside the Freddy's Fashion Mart incident with another case uh, where he egged on people to burn down Freddy's, Freddy's Fashion Mart, and I believe he said, get the Jew. You see, Al Sharpton has a thing for names like Zimmerman, so he jumped in there and turned it into a racial case. But I don't think this is a racial case. I believe this is a Lone Ranger vigilante named Zimmerman who posed as a neighborhood watchman but was hoping to find someone to shoot. That's my opinion. Now remember, we only have one side of the story, and that's the man who's alive. He said today, Zimmerman said he jumped out of the bushes and attacked me. Zimmerman describing Trayvon Martin confrontation. Zimmerman is heard telling a police officer how he saw Trayvon Martin walking through his Sanford, Florida neighborhood on a dark, rainy night. And as a neighborhood watchman, he tried to follow him in his car because there had been a series of break-ins in the gated community. Zimmerman claims he lost sight of Martin, got out of his car to call police, and was walking back to his vehicle when the 17-year-old attacked him. Well, let's stop right there. Why did he get out of his car? He never should have gotten out of the car. He should have stayed in his car till the police came. So right away there was liability in him getting out of the car because he was armed and he was dangerous and he was going to confront this kid. I'm not saying that Trayvon Martin was there to do good or bad. I don't know what he was doing there. But he had the legal right to be there. He didn't have a legal right to be killed. Zimmerman says that Trayvon jumped out of the bushes and he said, what the F is your problem, homie? Zimmerman says on the tape. He says he got out his cell phone to call 9-11, and I said, I don't have a problem. And he goes, no, now you have a problem, and he punched me in the nose. Zimmerman told police he fell down to the ground after being punched repeatedly. I tried to defend myself. He just started punching me in the face, and I started screaming for help. I couldn't see. I couldn't breathe. He claims that Trayvon put his hand on my nose and mouth, and he says, you're going to die tonight. Well, you don't know if that's true. He said the suspect was mounted on top of me and began to bang my head onto the ground. As he banged my head again, I just pulled out my firearm and shot him. He said, Martin fell backward, and he's like, all right, you got me, you got me. Under questioning, well, anyway, the rest of the story you heard. I have a question for the audience. If there was no racial differential between the perpetrator of the, of the shooting and the dead man, would you feel the same way or, or as, the, as the protective of Zimmerman? And I'll reverse it. If you're a black person listening to the show. If Trayvon Martin was not black, if he was just a white kid who had a, a history of uh, break-ins and was walking around in a place where there had been break-ins and a neighborhood watchman shot some white kid, would you give a damn about Tra the kid named Trayvon Martin if his name was John Smith? The answer is no to both of those questions because this is a racially charged case where black people are defending Trayvon and white people are defending Zimmerman. But again, ladies and gentlemen of the Savage Jury, Although there's blatant media bias against Mr. Zimmerman of the most disgusting yellow journalism I've ever seen in my life, one after the other attacking him, publishing his uh, social security number, his driver's license, making things up, snipping tapes, they should all go to prison for what they did to Zimmerman. They've committed crimes against humanity. But that doesn't take away the fact that I believe uh, one man had a gun and one man didn't. See, the case to me, if I were an attorney, let us say a prosecution, a lawyer for the prosecution for the state, Michael Savage. I'm not a lawyer, but if I were a lawyer and I had to 
prosecute this case, I'd go before you, the jury, and say, look, one man had a gun and one man didn't. Had Trayvon Martin had a gun, no contest. We wouldn't be here today, ladies and gentlemen. Zimmerman would not be on trial. But in fact, he is on trial because there's an issue here of him being armed and the other guy not being armed. Moreover, ladies and gentlemen, the 9-11 operator told Zimmerman to not pursue the other man. I think we're going to get that sound in a minute. And they told him to stay in his car. But Zimmerman ignored this order from the 9-11 operator. And he got out of his car to be John Wayne. And when he confronted the other guy, a fight ensued. The other guy was not armed. And if in the fight, he was getting his head bashed. And at which point, he pulled out a gun. It's a very difficult case for you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. But I think you're going to have to find that Zimmerman is guilty of unpremeditated murder, certainly not in the second or first degree, but he definitely killed an unarmed man for virtually no reason. That's my opinion. Now, I realize, having said that, my audience will go berserk and ballistic and accuse me of things I'm not guilty of. You have to understand something about me. I am a man who tries to use logic, and I believe in the rule of law, which is why I think Obama should be in prison. And I also believe that so many black people have been given a pass on so many crimes in this country because of the political nature of this sick nation, that people are naturally running to the defense of Zimmerman here. But you shouldn't take other cases and apply them to this case. In this case, you have a Lone Ranger type of mall cop who couldn't qualify to be a real cop, walking around like a macho John Wayne with a loaded gun in his pocket, praying to God he could find somebody to shoot so he could go home and be a hero to the neighborhood. And I think you have to find the fact that unfortunately for him, but more unfortunately for Trayvon Martin and his parents, one man is dead and one man is alive. I'm going to let you think about this. And the phone number to call with your opinion on these issues is 1-855-400-7282. That is 1-855-400-7282. This is Michael Savage. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE.